So this is adapted from The Perfect Health Diet. Uh, it's a wonderful example of what happens when you scale your carbs uh, to different levels. So basically, if you go super high carb, the diet, if you recall from the earlier presentation that was recommended by the government or um, a lot of other folks for, uh, for high carb, low fat, you find that your body basically has, has so many carbs that it needs to dispose of them in some way. And so you're not really using the glucose you have, you, you have to get rid of it. And so that's a stress on your body. You can only do it for so long. Even if you're uh, you know, Michael Phelps or a marathon runner or a professional athlete, like m most football players live until their, their early 50s because a lot of them are kind of doing this stuff that's, that's running on this high octane fuel and their body has to dispose of all this extra food, all this extra glucose, and it's a stressor. When you go super low carb, it can work really well for fat loss as a tactic for a little while. That's why you, you see um, Atkins diets work uh, and a lot of other kind of fattish diets will work because when you take the carbs out, your body sheds a lot of the retained um, water. So a lot of water weight comes off right at the beginning. Uh, carbs, the water follows carbs and that sort of thing. So you, all of a sudden your glycogen stores, which are stored carbs in your liver as well as your muscles, start to become depleted. Eventually you go into ketosis. If you're there for too long, certain people respond just fine with that sort of diet. Other people don't respond well at all. So it can be beneficial to have a diet that's a little bit more moderate carb. So <clears throat> I'm gonna be talking about this a little bit more later, but I'm not saying that you should eat no carbs, that you should even eat low carbs. I'm saying that we're eating too many right now. Uh, there is, there's basically a range of carbs that you can eat and your body functions very well. It's different for every person. But generally speaking, on the scale of things, if you wanna lose a lot of weight really quickly, you can dial those down and it'll work, at least short term. But in terms of long term as a lifestyle choice, most people find that somewhere in the range of 70 to 100 carbs a day, and that can go up and down, will work pretty well for them. Because when you look back at, uh, humans, what they would be naturally eating in their environments, they would be eating foods that are high in fiber, nutrient dense, um, low glycemic index, low glycemic load, uh, and not a heck of a lot of carbs. The, the carb sources that exist in like a paleo or ancestral diet are based off of veggies and fruits. And fruits are actually kind of rare. Um, they're not something that, that most uh, people would be eating all the time in their natural environment with some tropical exceptions there. Uh, but what you find when you look at Eskimos, for example, is they ate almost 100% fat, especially through the winter, and they didn't have any heart disease or, or other problems like this or diabetes. Uh, but we're seeing that because we have to dispose of all this junk. Your body doesn't know what to do. It can kind of deal with it for a little while until, until it breaks. So if you want to lose fat, then what a lot of... Uh, bodybuilders, fitness models, celebrities, uh, some athletes will do. It's basically dial back your carbs, get rid of sugar, get rid of grains, um, even get rid of things like white potatoes because they're surprisingly fairly high on the glycemic index, especially if you're getting them from potato chips or other like semi-processed or very processed foods. Uh, when you dial it back, your body starts burning fat. That's, that's what you want to do. The reason my podcast is called Fat Burning Man is it's a bunch of puns, but it's when your body functions correctly, you're burning fat. You're not running on sugar. You're not disposing of sugar and running on this constant source of Oreos. You are burning fat from your, your stored fat, your love handles, your stomach, your legs, or you're burning fat that you directly consume and that's the fun stuff. That's the sustained energy because when you rely on carbs, you're going up and down, up and down all the time. And that's what we're seeing a lot. But if you want to lose fat, then dialing back your carbs, which necessitates dialing up your protein or your fat and or both, uh, you start to see some pretty shocking results in terms of fat loss. Now, Atkins, I get a lot of questions about this. It's just like, well, isn't paleo just like the Atkins diet? The answer is that... <laughs> There are 
all kind of different ways of explaining a very simple mechanism within the body. When you eat too many carbs, you get fat. This has been known for a really long time. Somehow we lost this knowledge along the way, but most of our great grandmothers know that starches and donuts and too many pastries and that sort of thing, too much sugar makes you fat. It's what happens. If you have a little bit, your body can deal with it, it's fine. But if you focus on fat, you know, the, the cream on the milk back in the day, that wasn't the thing that you disposed of and, you, and made you <laughs> shake in your boots because it was going to give you a heart attack. That was the most precious part of the milk. That was exactly what you wanted to have more than anything else. They weren't drinking skim milk. It's ridiculous. You know, they weren't uh, patting their pizza to get rid of the extra oils. It's, it's a little bit absurd how far we've taken this. So I'm not saying that carbs are bad. I'm not saying that, that fat is good necessarily. I'm saying we shouldn't have to worry about this too much as long as we're following our natural diet, which would naturally be uh, in, the, in basically the right equation of those macronutrients for our bodies to function well and function normally.